are all okay tonight. Frankie Williams Sr. is survived by his wife, a son and three grandchildren, and also a very big extended work family here at the Blue Crab Restaurant. And they tell me tonight there will never be another Frankie. Reporting live in New Orleans, I'm Jennifer Crockett, WDSU News. Do you think we can get a quick comment about the AG's probe, Ms. Cantrell? Mayor-elect Latoya Cantrell not saying much about the ongoing state investigation into her credit card use. The attorney general issued subpoenas last week, and this Friday there's a hearing on that case at criminal court in Orleans Parish. WDSU's Travers McElroy is live at City Hall with what Cantrell had to say about this probe, which wasn't much, Travers. That's right, Sean. She's clearly not saying much, and in some cases, even avoiding the media about this topic in general. Mayor-elect Latoya Cantrell addressed a packed house on economic development in Algiers on Tuesday afternoon, speaking for more than 20 minutes. And I really appreciate that. But she had little to say when we asked her about the Attorney General's investigation into her credit card use at City Hall. What do you think the Attorney General is looking into? Um, you know what? I have no idea. These things I'm learning more actually from the media than I am from, in, excuse me. The state's top prosecutor, Jeff Landry, launched an investigation last week, nine days after Cantrell overwhelmingly won the runoff election to become the city's first female mayor, issuing subpoenas signed by an Orleans Parish criminal court judge. Landry's looking into questionable purchases Cantrell made on her city-issued credit card items that appear to be non-work related. Cantrell reimbursed the city $9,000, $4,400 of which was repaid right before she qualified to run for mayor. But some of the reimbursements were made years after the initial purchases. So many people to thank. So after her speech, Cantrell left English Turn Country Club through a back exit. Again, she didn't say much. Do you think we can get a quick comment about that? AG's probe, Ms. Cantrell. A uh, hearing is set for Friday as the AG is asking all judges be recused since City Hall funds the court and since Cantrell's father-in-law is the magistrate judge. Well-known defense lawyer Billy Gibbons, who's previously represented high-profile people like Darren Sharper, Robert Durst, and businessman Fred Hebe, filed a motion on Cantrell's behalf to have some of the subpoenas tossed out. You hired Billy Gibbons. Are you paying for that, or is the campaign paying for that? Now that hearing is set for 8.30 a.m. on Friday morning, Marilette Cantrell tells us she will not be at that hearing, but her attorney will be. For now, we're live at City Hall. I'm Travers Mackle, WDSU News. Travers, thank you. Still ahead, solving a North Shore homicide investigation. More incentive being added to get someone to come forward, but find out why there's concern over who is fronting the reward. And how you could help decide where hurricane funds will be spread around our state. Stay with us. WDSU News at 6 returns after the break.
speaking out. Welcome back. The state is looking to the public to figure out what to do with disaster recovery funding from past hurricanes like Katrina and Rita. Now, leaders say extra money is needed to help Louisiana continue to recover from the storms. They are hoping to move around money from some programs that have ended and had a surplus of funding to help out other programs like the first time home buyer pilot, the LA safe program and local government infrastructure. You have until now until December 19th to submit your ideas and We've got a link on WDSU.com for you to send your comments and find out more about the plans. Louisianians are sending help to our neighbors to the west as they continue to recover from Hurricane Harvey. 500 mobile homes have been sent to Texas to stand as temporary housing. The FEMA units were originally used by people in Louisiana who were affected by last summer's historic flooding, and they have now been repaired and made livable for storm survivors out in Texas. More FEMA mobile homes are expected to be sent over as more Louisiana flood survivors find new places to live. Coming from where I come from, it is very much about execution. And, you know, when I'm scheming up the offense or what have you, I try to be very detailed. <laughs> now look at that still ahead. Drew Brees takes off the pads and puts on his coach's hat while he's pulling double duty on the field. And tonight on primetime at 7 o'clock, it's a very pentatonics Christmas, followed by Law & Order SVU at 8 and Chicago PD at 9 o'clock. And then join us for WDSU News at 10, followed by The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. differently. Live, local, late-breaking. This is WDSU News at 6 with Scott Walker, Sulla Kim, Chief Meteorologist Margaret Orr, and Sports with Fletcher Mackle. 
Well, the reward for information leading to an arrest in the Nanette Crental homicide investigation is now $10,000. And it's where the increase comes from that may surprise you. North Shore reporter Heath Allen joins us live in the studio with the answer, Heath. And the answer is this. The $5,000 comes from Nanette Crental's husband, embattled St. Tammy District 12 Fire Chief Stephen Crental, and it's money he gave Crime Stoppers last October. I gave that money to them before I ever returned to work and and my welcome back to work was the initial civil service meeting when these allegations were brought on. St. Tammany District 12 Chief Steve Crindle says he gave this $5,000 check to Crime Stoppers back in October. The money to increase the reward for information leading to the arrest of who killed his wife Nanette. Her body was found in the rubble of their burned out home last summer, but she'd been shot to death. St. Tammany Parish Sheriff's Office has cleared Crendel as a suspect in the crime, but a number of District 12 firefighters have now raised issues about how he runs the district. I have all of my evidence. There's absolutely no facts to the way that they have presented everything. But in recent weeks, that has gotten a lot of media coverage, and only yesterday. I was contacted by Crime Stoppers yesterday, and they don't feel that my name being tied to this and the money that I gave them would be good for either of us. This afternoon, the reward was increased to $10,000. Crime Stoppers Executive Director Darlene Casanza says they were not holding the money because of the investigation, that it was only a matter of how and when to announce the donation, press conference or press release. Costanza says Crime Stoppers' primary concern is justice for Nanette Crentel. They, they wanted me to do it anonymously or have somebody else give it, but I feel like I've given it I can take the, the ownership of giving it. It wasn't something they solicited. 